Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. In this video, we are going to be removing and reinstalling a harmonic balancer, also known as a crank pulley, in a 2000 Nissan Pathfinder. If you need this part or other parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1aauto.com. All right, we're going to pop the hood right here, pull that lever. There's a release right here. If you go to the center and to the right a little bit, right there. I'm going to grab the prop rod and put it right there. All right, we're going to disconnect the negative terminal in the battery. Use a 10 millimeter wrench, loosen it up. Get a little looser. We'll pull that up, set that aside. All right, pull these two clips over here. Right here, right here. There's two clips over here. And then this one gets pulled up from down underneath. Pull up. Pull the air filter up. Use a straight blade screwdriver. Pull this hose off. Over here, I'm going to disconnect the connector right here. There's a button on the back side. Push it down. Pull the connector off. It's a connector for the mass airflow sensor. Disconnect that. Little retainer right here. Pull that off. Take this clip off here so we can move the throttle cable out of the way. I'll take this one off too. And that one there. Just push it out of the way. Next we can use a straight blade screwdriver. Loosen up the worm clamp on the throttle body. Loosen this one. Pull that out of the way. I'm going to pull these hoses off using some channel lock pliers. Just pinch the clamp and then twist it back and forth. And do the same for this one. this box out of the way. So I need to take this lower cover off. Um, I have a 10 millimeter bolt here. There may have been other bolts here. This vehicle is missing some. So I'll take this one off. I'll use a 10 millimeter socket, an extension, and a ratchet. Over here, there's a bolt. There's one right here. There may be one right there, right there, and right here. Pull it down. Ready? Yep. All right. So this lower part of the fan shroud has to come off. I'm going to take and grab the center right here. Pull it past that little nub right there. You should be able to slide this out.
up here on the fan shroud. As you can see, there's a little tab right here. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. All right. You're gonna push down on that tab. And then you can pull out. And it's gonna release the lower part of the fan shroud. And then do the same for the other side. A little tricky to get your hands up in here. Let's see. And I'll take that piece off. You can rotate it, pull it down, pull it up. These little clips right here, on both sides. All right, we're gonna drain the coolant. This vehicle does not have a pepcock on the radiator, so what we're gonna do is disconnect the lower radiator hose. We're gonna have something to drain the coolant into. We'll grab it, grab this clamp with some um, channel lock pliers, move it to the side. And we're gonna use one of these picks, uh, like a right angle pick. Um, we actually sell a kit of these at 1AAuto.com. You can take and get right in here, go all around the, the hose. That'll loosen it up. Be careful not to get it all over you. Take a shower in it. So once that's drained, leave that out of the way. There's a little bit of rust on this clamp up here. I'm just going to spray it with some rust penetrant before I try to take off the the clamp. Let me get some channel locks to hold it so it doesn't twist while I'm doing this. Just like this. Loosen this bolt up. As I loosen the bolt, it loosens up on the clamp. Clamp aside. All right. Um, I can grab the upper radiator hose, twist it a little bit, peel it off. Next, we're going to take this hose off right here. There's a clamp right here. You just grab it with your fingers, pinch it, and pull that off. Then we'll pull the hose off over here. That goes to the coolant reservoir and we'll just set that aside. Next I'm going to take this 10 millimeter bolt out on the fan shroud. The 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. And we'll take this one out as well. should be loose. All right, so I'm just gonna pull this up over here. Once I pull that up, then I'll be able to clear this hose over here. Pull it up over there. And gently pull it out. 
So before we pull the belts off, we're gonna take this fan, these nuts for the fan, and we're just gonna loosen them up. We're not gonna take them out completely. We just wanna crack them free. It'll be easier to do it while the belt is still on there. So we take our 10 millimeter wrench, get in here. Just crack it free, crack this one free. This one free. Sometimes you might have to hold the belt if it's really tight. And then this bottom one. So once those are cracked free, we can take the belts off. Okay, first we're gonna take off this AC belt. Um, the tensioner is right here. It's not an automatic tensioner, so it's a manual tensioner. So we're gonna have to start by loosening this nut right here on the front of it. It's a 14 millimeter. Just loosen it about a, a half a turn. And then the adjuster is over here. We're gonna use a 14 millimeter socket. We'll start loosening it. As we loosen it, the belt is getting looser. The tensioner is going, going down. can take the belt off here, just like that, and then bring it around the fan. Okay. So we are reusing these belts because they're new. Um, if we were replacing them, this would not make a difference, but we want to label these from where they came off so you don't put them in the wrong spot. So we're going to put AC on this one because it's the AC belt, and we'll label the others as we go. So next we're going to take off the drive belt. This drives the alternator and the water pump and that's it. And the tensioner is right here. Um, we're going to use a 14 millimeter socket and a ratchet and I'll just crack this free. Just go about a, about a half turn. And then the adjuster is over here on the side. And the adjuster for this is a 12 millimeter, so we're gonna use a 12 millimeter socket, an extension, and a ratchet. And we're gonna loosen this up. And that's gonna bring the tensioner up and take the tension off the belt. Once there's enough tension off the belt, you should be able to slide it off. Take it off here. Go around the fan, just like this. Just like that. This one's the drive belt, so we'll label it drive. All right, we're gonna get this power steering pump belt off. We need to raise the front of the vehicle. Um, we have a 12 millimeter wrench that we're gonna loosen this nut up just a little bit. Crack it free, maybe a half turn, maybe a whole turn. That's about good. And then the adjuster is over here on the side. It's somewhat hard to get to. It's a 12 millimeter. You can loosen it with a wrench or a ratchet wrench. You might be able to get a small socket and ratchet in there. Try it with a 12 millimeter socket and ratchet. Just loosen this. As we're loosening this, 
the belt. Belt should, yeah, you can pull on the belt and that will pull the power steering pump down. This is loose enough, I can do it by hand. Just keep pulling it down. All right, so now I'm able to fold the belt up and over and off the power steering pump. And then I'll take it off the crank. And pull it down. All right, let's pull the radiator out. I'm gonna take this. These clips are pretty rusty. These are for the transmission cooler. We'll pull these back. Let's see. Some channel lock pliers. I'll do the same with this one. Use a little pick here. Try to get in there, try to twist it. Be able to twist it and pull it out. I'm gonna put a drain bucket underneath because we're gonna lose some fluid. Put that out of the way. I'll do the same for this one. Just back and forth. I'm gonna move this clamp a little more. Now we can pull it off. Pull that one back. Tip of the day. I'm gonna use some earplugs and plug up this tranny line and keep it from leaking. Make sure you don't push it in too far. I'll do the same with this one. And that'll stop the flow of the tranny fluid while we're letting the lines off. So now we'll take these 10 millimeter nuts off with a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. This one's coming off pretty hard, so I'm just gonna work that rust penetrant back and forth a little bit, because I don't wanna break the stud. We can pull this bracket off. I'll do the same for this side. Pull this bracket off. You can grab a radiator. Pull that cardboard out of the way. Pull it straight up. Now that we have the belts off, I'm going to take the rest of the nuts off of this fan. Pull the fan out of our way. You can use a 10 millimeter wrench if they're still tight. When I get the last one almost out, make sure you're holding the fan so it does not fall off. You don't want it to hit the radiator because it could damage the radiator. I'll grab the fan. Pull it gently. You can pull the fan out. This water pump pulley will come right out. Now I'm gonna take a one and one sixteenth socket and a pneumatic gun. 
and we'll take this crank bolt out. I'm gonna hold the crank. I don't think it'll turn too much, but have it unloosen. And I was watching the timing mark and it's still in the exact place it was when I started. So I know the crank didn't move. That's good, pull that bolt out. We'll do the same on this side. Find the hole. Snug these up with a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Snug this one up. And they're not really gonna tighten up, they'll just keep going. So once you get a good bunch of turns going, then it'll be all set. We're gonna tighten down the center of this puller. Now we're gonna take a 19 millimeter socket, stick it on the end of this puller. You're gonna hold the pulley while you're tightening this down. As you're tightening this down, the pulley is coming out. So make sure you hold on to the pulley because you don't want it to fall. There it is. Pull that up, just like that. Uh, before we put the crank pulley back on, um, we're gonna take these um, bolts out. We're gonna take this puller off. These are 10 millimeter bolts. Yours may be different depending on your type of puller. While you have your crank pulley out, you wanna check this rubber ring around here because this is actually, the pulley part is actually separate from this hub part. Um, and sometimes that will rot away and this will just free spin. So you wanna check that. If it's bad, you're gonna to wanna to replace it. Okay, so we're gonna install this crank pulley. Just line this up. In here, push it on. Okay, it's recommended that you replace this bolt when you take take it out, but we're gonna reuse ours. And you're gonna wanna torque this to 150 foot-pounds. I don't have a way of stopping the engine, so I'm just gonna use a pneumatic gun to get it on. So we're gonna put the power steering pump belt on. Uh, normally you have the coolant fan on here. We have the fan off at this time to make it easier to see. Uh, we're gonna wrap this belt around the crank. On the back side of the crank pulley is where the V channel goes. And then over here onto the power steering pump. We'll start it at the top and then we'll try to rotate it down. Just like that. Right, we're gonna tighten up the adjuster screw right here. 
is a 12 millimeter. I'm using a 12 millimeter socket with a ratchet. I'm just gonna tighten this to get more tension on the belt. Pull this cardboard out. Slide this radiator down. There's two, two little mounts that you want the grommets to fit right into. Get those lined up. And take this upper radiator support. This is gonna go on like this. One like this, so go like that. And these two nuts will go on top. Just like that. Take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. We'll tighten these down. Tighten this one down. All right. All right, we're gonna take our plug out of our uh, transmission cooler line hose. Pull that out and then press that on here. We'll do the same with this side that and push that on and we'll move the clamps just use regular pliers for this and that'll be good and same with this one right there you can use a little bit of brake parts cleaner to clean that up. Now we're gonna install this lower part of the radiator hose. We'll take our channel lock pliers, move this hose clamp. There's a little marking on the radiator hose right here that shows that goes to the bottom. So that's gonna go like that. Now we can reinstall this hose. I'm gonna turn this. Yeah, all right. Now we'll reinstall this hose. Stick this here. Tighten that hose clamp down. There's a 10 millimeter socket extension and a ratchet. We'll tighten this hose clamp down. All right, clamp that down so it's snug. Install this bolt here. Install this bolt here. The 12 millimeter bolt, we'll tighten it down. The 12 millimeter socket and extension. Okay, I'm gonna install the fan next. I'm using a ratchet wrench to tighten these nuts down. You're not gonna be able to get a torque wrench in here. So just do the best you can.
Once we put the belts on, you can snug them up a little bit more. Next, we'll take our drive belt. Pull the tape off that we labeled it with. Now, when you're putting this on, you'll still have your radiator shroud here. You can sneak it past there. I'm gonna go around the fan, just like so. And you're gonna have the belt start at the crank. It's gonna come up to the water pump. It's gonna go back here on the alternator. Once it's around all three of those pulleys, then we can put it under our tensioner pulley. Now we're gonna tighten up the tensioner pulley right here. We'll take a 12 millimeter socket, an extension, and a ratchet, and we'll tighten up this tensioner pulley. And right here, when we push down on it, we're looking for about a quarter inch of deflection. And that probably about good there. If you find that the belts squeal, um, you may want to tighten it up a little bit more. And you may have to tighten it if they stretch a little bit. So now we'll tighten this bolt up for the tensioner. Lock that down, it's pretty good and tight. Now we'll take our AC belt that we labeled, pull the tape off. And we'll slip it over the fan. It's gonna go around the crank down below. It's gonna go, come up around and on the compressor and then up and over the tensioner. Oops, slipped off the crank. Just like that. Now I'm gonna tighten the tensioner right here. For this adjuster, I'm gonna need a 14 millimeter socket and an extension and a ratchet. I'm tighten this up. Make sure it's around your pulleys in all the grooves. And the same here. We're looking for about a quarter inch of deflection. So we'll tighten this a little more. That's about good. Give it one more turn. All right. Now we'll tighten this nut down. Now that's snug. Now if any of these end up squealing or loosen up in a couple days of driving, then just snug them up a little bit more. So after you install the belts, you're gonna wanna tighten these nuts up for the fan. Get in there with your 10 millimeter wrench and make sure those are snug. Now we're gonna put our radiator fan shroud on. Let's slide this over. It's a little bit tight over here. Snug it under here. Just like that. There's some pins, it lines up down here. And then same on the other side. Make sure that's in, and then we'll put the two bolts in. Take this bolt right here. 
and this one right here. We'll tighten these two up with a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Same with this one. Put this hose on, the upper radiator hose. Get this clamp lined up. Down. Use a 10 millimeter ratchet and tighten this down. That's snug. Pull this um, throttle cable down. Click that in place. And then this goes in over here. Like that. Take the air filter. Stick the air filter back in. We'll take the air box. It's going to slide in under here. There we go. Click that in there. Click this in here. Click this right here. And click this one right here. And click this hose on here. And there's another coolant hose. This is, goes to your overflow. It's clicked in over here, here, pushed on there. And then this is gonna go right here. Connect that snorkel to the throttle body and these two little breather holes, breather hoses. Grab my pliers, squeeze this, and I can put that on there. And then this one can go on here. Move this clamp with my channel lock pliers. Oops. Push that on. I'll take this. I'll tighten that up right here. Tighten this up. This warm clamp up with an eight millimeter socket and a ratchet and extension. Make sure it's all the way down. Looks good. Snug that up. This goes underneath this clip. Just like that. Oh. This wire right here goes over to here. This clip wasn't broken, it would secure right there. And then this plugs into the mass airflow sensor, right like that. Right. Now we're gonna put this lower fan shroud on. Get this lined up here. Get 
the top part lined up. And that'll clip in. This will clip in. And then this one should clip in. There it goes. It's locked in. Make sure that tab's in there. That's good. Put this lower shield back up. This shield does not have all the bolts, so we may have more than what we have here. We may have bolts there, there, and there. This one does not have those bolts. Good. Now we're going to connect the negative post to the battery, tighten it up with a 10 millimeter wrench. Okay. Now we're going to want to add our coolant. You can use a funnel, add your 50 50 mix of coolant. In there, and we're going to fill it up and then bleed it. Whenever you replace any internal engine components or you're draining the coolant for any reason, um, you're going to want to add your coolant here into the radiator. Um, you cannot add the coolant just in the reservoir because the engine will not get any of the coolant. So add it to the reservoir. If you're checking your engine coolant on a regular basis, um, you can just check the reservoir and top that off. And we're going to add our 50-50 mix of coolant and water. As we're adding this, it's a good idea to look underneath the vehicle and check and see if there's anything leaking out. Ours looks good. Okay, so there is some air in the system. Um, still, even though we have this coolant all the way filled, the radiator is full of coolant, the engine still has some air pockets in it. What we're going to do is we're going to start the vehicle and let the engine run for about 10 minutes. All right, so we let the vehicle run for about 10 minutes. As you can see, the coolant temperature, we want to keep monitoring it while we're letting it run. Um, we want it about halfway in between the cold and the hot. Um, this vehicle doesn't have temperature readings, so you just have to use your best judgment. If you start seeing it go up to about three quarters above, not in the halfway mark, you're going to want to stop, shut the vehicle off, let the vehicle cool down, and then re-bleed it, recheck your levels, and um, start over. All right, so. We let the engine run for about 10 minutes and the engine got up to operating temperature and the thermostat opened and all the air bleeded out of the engine and came out our funnel and everything's all bled, everything's good. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is with this funnel, um, stick this uh, plug in here and then I can pull the funnel up and make sure the level is right up to the top of the radiator. And with the engine still hot, I will put this radiator cap on and we will let the engine cool down. We are going to want to check before we just let it cool down the coolant reservoir and make sure the coolant reservoir has enough coolant in it. I like to go about an inch above the fill line um, when doing this procedure because it is going to suck back in some more coolant and then you can adjust it once the engine is cool. I'm going to add this coolant to the reservoir.
If you don't have one of these funnels, that's okay. When you're bleeding the system, you can leave the radiator cap off while you're running the engine. Um, you're just gonna have to monitor it closely so that you don't lose coolant. So you're gonna have to stand here with your coolant bottle and keep adding coolant. And if it starts coming out, um, then shut the engine off and start the bleed procedure again. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.